GCSE physics is definitely a subject that many people struggle with and that's okay, that's totally fine. We admit that physics is hard, but we also have to work on finding ways uh, to approach physics and to get better at it. And today I'm going to be telling you and giving you tips on how to get an A star in IGCSE physics. So if you're new, new here or you don't know me, I'm Habiba and I took my IGCSEs um, during May, June 2022. And I got eight A stars for eight different subjects, being these ones. And I'm starting a new series where I talk about each one of these subjects in more detail. This is my third video on that series. And if you want to check out the other two videos, one on English and the other on maths, I will link them down below and up here somewhere. And yeah, let's get started. So the first tip, and this is very important is to get familiar with your syllabus or specification. Uh, basically, if you take, for example, CIE, IGCSE Physics, which is 0625, you go to the Cambridge website and you print your syllabus from there. Print your syllabus, okay? Your syllabus is your best friend. It tells you exactly what you need to know to get that A star in physics or to solve physics papers. Um, most people use the textbook as their main guide. They follow the textbook from A to Z. But I recommend doing that with the syllabus instead. The reason being, the syllabus specifies exactly each and everything that you need to know. While the textbook may or may not miss some points that you are supposed to know, or may add very additional, like a lot of additional points that you don't need to know anything about at all, uh, which just complicates things for no reason. So. What I want you to do is to follow each and every bullet point in that syllabus and to tick whatever point you know how to explain to someone or how to write down the answer for on a piece of paper. If you don't know or if you're not sure, uh, you can always like circle or um, you know mark that point and then research more about that point. So, for example, if you don't know a specific point, you can go to the textbook and read more about it there. Or you can go to online notes, which I'll be talking about in a second. Um, and basically try to get more familiar with that point or understand it more. Uh, or you can go to YouTube and it will explain everything. Or you can go to the teacher and your end goal is tick marks on every single bullet point. Um, yeah. So for those notes um, that I was talking about earlier, I would use save my exam, save my exam, literally did save my exam. <laughs> uh, they are, they explain every bullet point in detail. Uh, sometimes they do miss a couple of things, but overall they usually don't. And their explanation is really cohesive and clear and the, the explanation is very detailed. So I recommend save my exam. I also recommend IGCSE aid. The difference between IGCSE aid and save my exam is that IGCSE aid writes down the bullet point of the syllabus and explains what that bullet point means. So I would go to IGCSE aid when I did not understand a very specific bullet point uh, and I don't know where to look for it, uh, whether it's on save my exam or my textbook. And I'll find that they explain that very bullet point in their website. So it was very helpful. 100% recommend IGCSE aid and there's also Znote but I don't really use Znote but I've seen a lot of people use it same thing with physics and math tutor they have uh, flashcards and notes I don't use them but others find them helpful so you can check those out and see if they're for you or not um, yeah next is definitions uh, now physics is more like, of course, physics is literally all about understanding concepts and applying those concepts in real life applications. However, a very minute or tiny part of it is definitions. Uh, and you most probably get at least one definition in your paper that is worth two marks or three marks. And you don't want to lose those simple, very easy marks that you should be getting. Uh, so what I did is I those definitions are usually written in your syllabus. So when you're going through the syllabus, uh, write them down on a separate piece of paper uh, or if they're not written in your syllabus you can always check them out from past papers while solving or from 
the textbook if they are included in the textbook uh, but overall keep track of all the definitions and write them down in a, this notebook or sheets of paper uh, so that you learn them by heart and the exact points you need to write to achieve those marks so that you don't lose those marks you know what i mean you always want to be up ahead of people and if application is really hard for you or you need to improve a lot in physics you don't want to be losing marks in definitions especially also since physics is more about understanding concepts you need to be very clear with the concepts that you take so if you take something at school and you don't understand the concept really well you can't really just memorize the concept because the application changes you know like the concept yes it doesn't change but the application changes so when you come to apply a concept that you're not very clear with in an application question you might not be able to solve it or you don't understand how the concept works so you're not going to be able to get those marks uh or apply in that question if you don't understand anything in class make sure that your concepts are very very clear if your teacher you can't understand from the teacher or the teacher cannot explain that part for you really well you can always go to youtube uh you can always go to notes but just don't leave the concept hanging you know and sometimes uh the best way for me sometimes in some cases to basically deepen my understanding in a concept and understand it really really well the only way i could do that sometimes is through solving past papers and solving a lot of questions related to that concept uh yeah another thing about physics is the formulae so unlike uh as and al physics i don't take as or al physics but i do know that they they have a formula sheet at the back uh IGCSE, uh, igcse physics does not have that so um basically when you're studying do your own formula sheet so whenever you come across a formula you put it in there uh in your formula sheet um make sure that you know how to apply each of these formulas really well you can use the formula sheet as a to-do list same thing as the syllabus so if you know how to use that formula really well and you know where it is applied you take it if you have no idea where you you're going to be able to solve with this formula or how to apply that formula then you can always circle it and ask your teacher about that formula or search it up online or you can search for questions that do include that formula so you know that formula is from chapters related to magnetism for example so you can solve more papers on magnetism like classified papers or questions on magnetism so that you can try to find applications for that formula generally ask your teacher about it they will tell you where you can apply it and how you can apply it make sure that you're familiar with every single one of those formulas because they're very important basically also if you are solving a calculation question in physics uh and you you are of course required to write all the steps for your calculations um and write the formula down so that if your calculations are wrong you can get a mark with that formula that you've written down or if you don't know how to solve that question but you do know or you're very certain that this specific formula is supposed to be used in that question if you write down that formula you will be getting marks just for writing down the formula and one mark is better than none you know uh and about the steps you know uh you might be or like i've been guilty of doing this where i calculate everything in my head and i end up not writing a lot of steps this is wrong you should be writing down a lot of steps so that if you go wrong somewhere you can always get marks on the steps that you have written correct and also sometimes um when there are multiple calculation questions like sub questions in one big question if your calculations go wrong in the very first question and you substitute substitute that wrong answer in the next question if you have written down the steps in the second question you will be getting error carried forward marks which basically means if your concept of the calculations are correct but your answer for the first question that you have substituted in the second question is wrong you will be getting marks on your steps uh so this is very important past papers since again physics is all about understanding concepts and applying them the best way to improve in physics is no doubts just solving past papers solve a lot solve as many as you can for all papers of physics uh you know physics has three papers paper two paper four 
paper five or six, depending on your school. But solve for all of these papers and solve a lot because you will see improvement and you will be identifying which chapters you lack in the most. So, of course, after you cor correct, correct your paper, you will see where you got the most mistakes and you will conclude or evaluate that, oh, my concepts for that specific chapter are not that good and then you can work on improving those concepts for that chapter so you go watch more videos on that chapter or you watch someone on youtube solving that question and understand why you went wrong or you ask your teacher about it uh, basically uh, evaluating your past papers is very important so you see where you went wrong and you improve the mistakes that you've done and then you can also use a mistakes log. I've talked about this in the math video, link in the description. But basically, whenever you do a mistake in a past paper, you either screenshot that mistake or screenshot that question or put it in a folder or in a binder or you write it down on a piece of paper or a notebook. Basically, keep track somewhere of your mistakes so that you can get back to that, you know, tracker where you've tracked all your mistakes and you can revise your mistakes or you can test yourself on that question in a couple of days and see whether you've improved or not or you understand how to solve it now or not basically always keep track and come back to those questions later on the mistakes tracker is truly a lifesaver and it's truly how you can get the most out of solving a lot of past papers um yeah and then my the, the thing about solving a lot of past papers is you get familiar with the structure of each one of those papers. So, for example, you'll notice that paper two, the questions go on chronological order of the chapters in the syllabus. So the first couple of questions are going to be about general physics and then the next ones are about thermal physics and so on. You'll only find out those things when you solve a lot of past papers. Um, so, for example, paper six will always have an experiment question it will always have a graph question and so on. You know through solving a lot of past papers what you're supposed to expect from your papers and this makes you less nervous and more confident when you're going into your word exam. You're not going into something new, you're going into something that you are very familiar with through solving a lot of past papers. Uh, now my biggest tip is of course to solve paper 2, paper 4, paper 6 solve for each one of those don't neglect one of them because um if and god forbid you messed up really badly in one of those papers because you did well in the other two papers this can save you a lot of marks and you could get an a star this happened for me in my physics board exam the paper four application questions were completely new and we were not familiar with it or the concepts i had for example they were not very clear so I did lose a couple of marks here and there in paper four uh, and I was very scared that, that I wouldn't get an A star but I think what saved me or what most definitely saved me is paper two and paper six because I did really well in both of them um, and so yeah like don't neglect one of those papers because they could save you so I'm just saying so get familiar with your paper two uh, solving a lot of paper two, of course, um, or solving papers in general, they will make your timing better, like way better. Your calculations should get faster uh, and so on. Like your time management in general will get better. Um, and this is very, very important because sometimes you don't have time in the exam, uh, but this gets better uh, over time when you solve a lot. And for paper six, for example, get very familiar with the graphs and how to do axes and you know the line of best fit and how to solve questions based on graphs this is very important for paper four for example and for paper six the experiment question uh, i recommend that you watch a lot of videos on how those experiments work and understanding the concepts of those experiments so that if the experiments come but with a bit of a twist in the exam you are able to understand that twist and solve the question for that experiment really well um so yeah, and make sure that you solve a lot of paper six to get familiar with the different types of experiments they could give you um, because there's a lot of them and you'll only find new experiments through solving a lot and you'll get familiar with them through solving a lot. And if you don't understand the particular experiment, 
make sure that you clear your doubts in that experiment by asking the teacher watching videos on it trust me watching videos on experiments is very useful like it makes you visualize how things work out so your concepts automatically feel clearer so watch a lot of videos and practice a lot of questions on experiments and you should be getting better quite definitely um and you'll notice that a lot of those questions repeat so you might get a question that you have seen before in your main exam um which is the best thing that could happen to you um and watch videos on how to solve in general paper six questions because they're they're usually like seven marks and they have specific points that they want that you could write down like independent variables independent variables all these things will get you guaranteed marks so don't lose those marks you know uh and yeah make sure that you don't mess up in units make sure that you don't mess up in rounding so like three significant figures and all of that stuff you know don't mess those up it, it will come naturally with practice make sure you know how to use scientific notation because sometimes it is really helpful um and yeah practice a lot physics is all about practice i found physics in general as a very interesting subject um i really liked it as a subject i really really did and i liked how it's all about really applying your knowledge more than memorizing because i was more of an applying person than a memorizing person um so enjoy the process trust me it is really enjoyable i found it an enjoyable subject because it's really interesting but of course it depends from differs from person to person if you have any more tips you would give someone that's taking igcse physics or your friends leave it in the comments uh i check the comments too so if you have any suggestions leave them down below if you wanna follow me on social media i am at igcse I just says e student diaries i'll link my account in the description and yeah i'll link all the helpful websites and helpful resources down there <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and see you next time good luck